how do you um how do you take all of this into your daily life now like like you know when b- before your first reading you were sort of like well yeah okay i got to clear some stuff to you know open myself up to be a conduit to healing um but how do I do that? And there's stuff here that's stuck. It's like, oh, I don't really know what it is to suddenly having this, this huge amount of information over multiple lives and, and, and connections with, you know, people, you know, beyond the veil. And like, like, how does that sit with you now? When you look back at the beginning of that journal? Well, um, um, a lot has changed. It's, um, Especially the to to get an uh, to see how how big this whole system is, and um, that that really everything is connected with with one another. And um, there was also we haven't spoken about this yet, but uh, that you can ask for signs and for support from the other world. Um, we, we had, we had a, a pony and he had difficulties with his hooves and this was going on for a longer time already. And, uh, Pascal, also, yes. in, yeah, Pascal. And in this session, I asked for a sign from him. I, I would like to have a sign when it's the right point to let him go. And so this session was on the 30th of uh, December. Yeah. On the next day afterwards, and, and uh, the sign was that he said, "I want to go when uh, when I when I have my hooves hurting again." And the next day in the morning, I went out into the into the stable, and there he was standing on three hooves only, and kind of showing me the the fourth one that it's hurting and aching, and it was warm, and that's okay. Um, yeah, such yeah. a clear answer for a question I have asked, and this this just changed the whole perspective I have in my life. And yeah, and uh, we had him put down the other day. Yeah. So and uh, also in this process of of letting him go and putting him down, there was Tessa around, and as soon as he had gone and he he went immediately, it was so fast. And then I felt this joy and the freedom and the gratefulness he 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 sent to me that that I have understood that I did understand him, Absolutely. and that he is joyful now and he's he's running the fields with Tessa and yeah. And what was really interesting was that you were you were there in Austria with him and I was here in Australia and yeah. we were both doing this this journey. We we, we both connected in with him and we both experienced the same visions i guess of of what he was going through so he was showing us where he was going and we both saw him explode into the light and tessa was there and then we both saw them galloping across oh then i got goosebumps again (laughs) (laughs) but you know for, for for me there's always validations in my life that you know like you know sometimes in my life I thought I'm just like flat crazy you know I need to drink alcohol yeah. I need to drink more alcohol right and and you know the, the the realization that like no you know and and having shared experiences with with people like yourself where we're both experiencing the same thing and when I'm doing hypnosis with clients you know I'm often seeing the same visual that they're seeing under hypnosis and it's just this connection that we all have because the veil is so thin and mm-hmm. and everything is around us and and you know biofield energy is 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 around us biofield energy is 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 it's just this energy field that you know you can speak here and a horse in Austria will hear it, or you know, a horse in Austria can say, "Hey, Angie, text yeah. my mama and tell her I'm an urgent troll down in the fields, and I can get it here and text you and go, "Hey, can you check on Tessa?" And you're like, "Oh my God, you know, yeah." And and so yeah. this is this is how close we are, and we're actually this close to beyond the veil as well. So what I want to ask you is, you know, so many people talk about NDEs and so many people ask, can you have an NDE without, you know, without having to die? And it's like, 
That's a really silly question, you know, most people say. But to me, it's like, well, what we're talking about is if, if you want to have the near-death experience, that's a bit of a gamble, but you can actually go to that space within you. Yeah. It's available yeah. to you now. The, the near-death experience is simply another vehicle to get you down to this place. Mm -hmm. or, or it's, you know, it's incidental with what's happening when your body stops. So you, you stop in space and then you either move on from there to where you're going to go or, or you come back. And so to, to me, to me, this place is, is always um, just such an in-depth place. So, so, you know, people that have had near-death experiences and sort of remember parts of it can come and do the same journey that you've done, right? Mm -hmm. And they can go down there and, and finish conversations and ask questions and, and get reminders of things. And, you know, there's such a physical side of it because I remember you expressly talking to your guides and to your grandmother and to your mother and, yeah. and saying, how will I know that you're here? And your mother said, oh, you'll feel me. And when, yeah. you, when Pascal was getting put down, I said to you, your mother is there. She's leaning on the fence and she's wearing a light uh -huh. blue suit in sort of a 60s, yeah. very beautifully cut yeah, yeah, style. Yeah. And, uh, you know, very sort of um, perfect. And you said, yes, my mother had yeah, a Yeah, that's, that's her way. That was her way. She always was dressed up yeah. perfectly. And yeah. this was very important to her. Yeah, and I, I think you re you recalled that suit. She had a blue uh -huh. suit like that. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. And, and so these shared experiences are, are, are just mind-opening of, of what's available to us all, but it's all available within rather than without, right? Uh -huh. How do you explain that to people? Like when people say to you, uh, how could you even well, go to that place? Someone counted you down and you went to that place. Like how how can you even say that? What do you say to them? Well, probably I won't say it to all people. Yeah. But um, I I have the experience that um, these people who come to me um, are open for this kind of things. Yes. Otherwise, they wouldn't have reached out to me. Um, I. And I, I would explain that it's, uh, it starts like a meditation and, and then it goes deeper. And in a meditation, you also create a, a safe space. And, uh, and then you have someone who, who, who takes you even deeper. And uh, yeah, I would very much recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can't explain better. It, it, it just happened and it, it, it happened easily and it was a safe place for me and it was like being in a cinema and, and, and showing a lot of stuff uh, and then an interactive cinema where I can ask for and then I, I get the, the pictures for it. Thanks for listening. Angie is available for clinical hypnotherapy specializing in PTSD, trauma release, and active living and regression therapy via Zoom. To book or find out more about online workshops, you can contact her at angieb at gmail.com or visit her Facebook page and YouTube channel.